In this video, I'm going to show you how to add, remove, edit, and change your plugins and effects in Logic Pro for iPad. Plugins allow you to add audio effects such as compression, distortion, delay, reverb, and EQ to the tracks in your project. When you add a new track here in Logic Pro, such as an audio track, and you select one of these audio patches, plugins will automatically be added. In this case, with the basic audio, we get a compressor and the channel EQ. And if we change the audio patch over here on the left, you'll notice that the plugins will change as well. There are two ways to access your plugins here in Logic Pro. Let's show you the first one. That is to use the plugins panel. So we tap on this button at the bottom here, or you can use the B key on your keyboard. All of the plugins already added to that track are displayed. We can use these power buttons to turn them off or on. And if you want to actually adjust one, just double tap and it will open up this large window display for you to adjust the plugin settings. To go back to your plugin list, simply tap on the arrow and you'll be returned to this screen. You'll notice you also have some basic controls here on the front screen which can be super handy when you're listening to your mix and you just want to make a small tweak. To remove a plugin we need to go into edit mode so we're going to tap on the pencil icon here in the top right corner and then tap on one of these little minus signs and that's going to remove those particular plugins. To change the order of your plugins which can be super handy we hit the pencil again and then we can actually tap and drag and move the order around so if you want to make sure that your EQ for instance is at the end of your chain, you drag it to there, hit the pencil again, and you're good to go. To add a new plugin, we need to hit this plus button, the plus audio effects, and then we can choose from a bunch of stock plugins here in Logic Pro, as well as third-party plugins. Let's start by explaining the stock plugins. First of all, if you've used plugins recently, you'll notice that the most recent ones are up the top here. You can just tap on those to use them, or we can scroll down, and they're actually categorized here by things like amps and pedals, delay, distortion, dynamics, etc. To add a plugin, we simply tap on one of these, and then tap again. Say we want a de we tap the de and that plugin is added and ready to use. And we can, of course, use the same controls to turn it off and on, to double tap to go in to change it, and even use the edit mode that we showed before to change the order or remove that plugin. Logic Pro also allows you to use external plugins called AUV3s or Audio Unit Version 3 plugins. You can use those by tapping the plus button, scrolling down past the Logic Pro options to this section where you can see audio units. If you haven't downloaded or installed any, you'll have these Apple ones ready to use so you can play around with those, but it's actually really simple. If you go to the App Store, you can download external apps and use them as plugins in Logic Pro. A free plugin that I love is Wider by Infected Mushroom. So if you want to get started with external plugins, jump over to the App Store, type in Wider Infected Mushrooms and hit the download button and that will download Wider ready to use in Logic Pro. Once you've downloaded it, if we scroll down here, you'll notice that we have Infected Mushroom. We can tap on that one and hit the Wider button and now you'll notice that Wider is one of the plugins in our plugin chain. To use it, we use the exact same method. We can just turn it off or on. We can double tap to go into the full interface and you'll notice here that it brings in this nice display from the actual plugin. We can tap the back button there and again, we can use the edit button to change the order or remove our plugin. Many of your plugins, especially those created by Apple, will have their own presets and to access those, you need to tap in the bottom left here in Logic Pro and then it'll bring up these plugin presets and you'll notice that as we tap each different plugin, we get a different set of presets to add a preset. So say we wanted this drop drum mix compression preset. We tap that and you'll notice that our compressor has been updated now. We can double tap and make changes and adjustments to that, but using these as a starting point can really help out, especially when you're getting started with plugins. I mentioned at the start that there's a second way to view plugins and that's in the mixer interface. So if we tap on the mixer or you can use your X key if you're using a keyboard, we can actually scroll to the top here and you'll see that all of the same plugins that we have added are also listed here here in our mixer. Now to make adjustments to these, we simply double tap just as we do using the other interface. And this time we just hit the X key to jump back to here. If we want to edit these plugins in this view, we need to hit this to change our mix to our setup. And once you're in setup here, we can do things like moving our plugins around by dragging them up and down like so, or we can hit the plus button here to add new plugins. And we use this just as we do in our other interface. Finally, you might be thinking, Pete, how do 
I manage all these plugins? How do I know how to find wider? What if I don't remember it's made by infected mushroom? Well, guess what? We've got a search function. So if we hit the plus button here, either here in the mixer or back in the plugin section, you'll notice we've got a search box at the top. And this is how I find most of my plugins. We can type it directly in there. Or if we say wanted a compressor, we can type compressor there and we can bring those in really easily without having to scroll through a whole bunch of menus. Oh, and one last thing, you can also have both views if you want to. You can tap on the plugins and the mixer icon and have a complete view as well as your track up the top there. So this gives you an excellent view of everything that's going on and you can even scroll down and use your faders in that mixer panel. There's a heap more to learn when it comes to Logic Pro for iPad, but if you're just getting started, don't worry. I've got a complete beginner's guide to Logic Pro for iPad linked in the description below as well as a link to my playlist with all of my Logic Pro tutorials.